In this video, we're going to get started on a brand new retro remake project. And this time we're going to recreate Overwatch as a PS1 game from 1998. Retro Remake is a series where I take a modern game and recreate it in an older style. Think PS1 or N64 era. Overwatch is a first-person class-based shooter, but since I had already made two other shooters previously, I wasn't sure whether I wanted to make another one. Overwatch has the character D.Va who pilots a mech, and so initially I toyed around with the idea of turning Overwatch into a mech game similar to the Armored Core series on the PlayStation. Here's the prototype I built where I was working on basic movement and shooting. Things were going smoothly, but I just wasn't feeling very excited about the project, and so I decided to scrap the mech idea and do a first-person shooter after all. The first thing any FPS game needs is a first person character controller, which is the thing you control in game. By this time I've made so many of these bean shaped beauties that it's pretty much second nature. Overwatch is a multiplayer game that focuses on team play and capturing objectives. Allegedly, because in reality it never seems to work out that way, but moving on. Since I was translating it into a single player experience, I had the freedom to change up the gameplay a little bit. The game has a character called Lucio, and what makes him unique is that he rides around on skates and can ride on walls. With that in mind, I thought it would be cool to remake Overwatch as a fast paced single player shooter with parkour elements similar to Mirror's Edge or Titanfall 2. In the first person perspective, the gun you're holding is called a view model. View models typically consist of a pair of disembodied arms and a weapon, because that's normally all you get to see in an FPS game. Right now the view model looks really weird because it doesn't have any animations, and I'll fix that soon. But first I began working on recreating Lucio's wall riding. Getting Lucio to ride along the wall without falling off is actually quite tricky, and the way I solved it is by taking the direction the wall is facing outwards, as well as the direction of the wall straight up and down, and using those two vectors to get the cross product, giving me a vector running along the length of the wall which I could use to guide Lucio's movement. Thankfully, Godot, the game engine I'm using, has built in tools to handle the vector math stuff for me because without it I never would have been able to figure this one out. After that, I began working on animations for the view model. When you fire the gun, you shoot a volley of four projectiles every time you pull the trigger. It appears to be one smooth animation, but in reality, each shot is its own separate animation queued up one after another so that it appears like one action. This is so that I can make slight variations to each animation to make things look less robotic, and also because it gives me more flexibility for if the animation gets interrupted midway, or if I want to increase or decrease the number of shots you fire per volley without having to create a whole new animation just for that. I also tweak the wall writing animation a bit so that the camera tilts depending on which side of the wall you're on, and this is just to help make things feel more dynamic. One of Lucio's signature moves is being able to send enemies flying with a blast from his gun. This is mostly used to send people flying off the map with hilarious results, and for my game, I wanted to keep it as close to the original as I could get it. In front of Lucio is a cone-shaped area where any bad guy caught in it will take a little bit of damage and get launched in the direction you're facing. I do need to tweak things a little bit to make it closer to the original, but we can work on that in another video. One thing I didn't mention yet is Lucio's speed boost. When you press shift, you and any teammates near you will gain a temporary increase in speed, which is a very powerful ability in Overwatch. You'll notice in the bottom right of the screen when I activate the boost, a cooldown timer activates, forcing you to wait before using the boost again. And this is mostly for balancing purposes since being able to boost your entire team around the map constantly would be terribly broken. Currently my version has a cooldown timer as well, don't mind the placeholder graphics, but I'm debating whether or not this is even necessary since it's a fast paced movement based game and maybe it would be fun to be able to boost yourself anytime time you want. Let me know what you think. Finally, we need to talk about Lucio's ultimate ability. In Overwatch, the ability is called Sound Barrier, and when activated, it gives nearby teammates a massive amount of extra shielding. This is especially useful for negating damage from other powerful ultimates in the game, and people refer to it as a defensive ultimate since it doesn't do any damage itself. While this is great in a team-based multiplayer game, I feel like it wouldn't be very useful in a single-player setting against AI, and so I have a very different idea in mind for what sound barrier should do. But that's something that we'll show off in the next part of this series, so make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when the video releases. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. I would like to get back to making shorter, more frequent videos again, and I have a lot of exciting new ideas in mind, so expect to see more videos coming out soon. Anyways, thanks for watching, and have a nice day.